We honor every Halloween by carving surprising, spooky, and simply spectacular pumpkins. We've created timeless and playful designs and shared extraordinarily beautiful creations. From snaggletooth sculptures and striking silhouettes to a slithering, sprawling pumpkin snake. These cute little creatures will be sure to delight trick-or-treaters. And celestial pumpkins can be used to illuminate your path with a modern yet mysterious glow. To cast a more sinister shadow, you can light the way with haunted houses or greet your guests with a ghostly graveyard where jack-o'-lanterns mark the tombs of the unknown. And why not bring these shady characters out for a devilishly good time? Or you can bring your pumpkins indoors to create Halloween decor with grown-up appeal. These ornate sconces cast flickering shadows, while hanging orbs and chandeliers brighten autumn nights. This innovative pumpkin punch bowl is perfect for serving a sinister cocktail at your Halloween party. You can even use a pumpkin to hold an arrangement of beautiful chrysanthemums. It's easier than you think. We're always finding surprising ways to transform pumpkins, and this season we found some new twists on traditional carving techniques. We've embraced nature with a faux bois pumpkin and this etched ginkgo leaf design. The instructions are in the October issue of Living. This Halloween, I hope you'll go to your pumpkin patch and select some beautiful pumpkins to transform. Whether it is simple or extraordinary, Halloween is simply not Halloween without pumpkins. One of my favorite carving projects has been these adorable pumpkin owls. Tom Tamborella and I are just about to make the cutest Halloween pumpkin you have ever seen. It's not just a pumpkin, but it's a combination of pumpkins and squash or gourds. First thing is to empty out the pumpkin. Empty him out. And this one, I just cut the top off. I'm gonna use him upside down. Oh, okay. This way he has a nice shaped head. Oh, good. And You've marked it here. Yeah, I started putting in some plumage. Okay, so and how'd you do that? I used this wood gouge which with a nice curve. Oh, so that's a good chisel. Yeah, and uh, basically just come in and puncture, oh. and it gives you a nice curved line. You right. get this very stylized breast plumage. Right, and to get this really beautiful light colored plumage, you would cut a little bit out of the upper curve. Yeah, you just dig knife. out. Right. But if you just put it in deep enough, you'd also get a nice illuminated slit. Mm -hmm. Right. So I should start working on the Jack B. Little. Yeah, so. we need one more of those Okay, so just out. dig out the seeds and the all the little bit of pulp that's inside that little Jack B. Little. I'm using this hole cutter, which is really just a sharp piece of brass pipe to put in some eye holes here in the front. And I've also put a hole in the back so the heat can escape. Now our next step is to make our eyes. You can do that. Drill a hole right out of the center oh, of so that. Oh, you, so you'll need a drill with what size bit? That is a 3 8 inch drill bit. Okay. So that's the... Yep, yeah, that's so that part. Works, that works nicely. Very crisp. Yeah, okay. All right, now we're going to mount all of these pieces on using toothpicks. If you find it's a little hard, you could use a needle, tool, scribe, or, you know, even just a nail or something to start the hole, because the pumpkin shells can be really hard. And I found that to be probably the most problematic of the whole project, was getting these toothpicks on the pumpkin. We stick that on. You can pierce like that, that. Yeah. Ooh, cute. Here, you can do that one. Okay. Do you have two big eyes? Yeah. Yes. He's looking good. Very good. And now the nose, which is just two sections of the Jack B. Little. Okay. So now where are we going to put him? It's sort of like right here. Then I'll put the hole up here. And then we can get that right on. Good, strong, sturdy, square. <laughs> yeah, don't use uh, the wimpy toothpicks. flat ones. And this is a lot easier than cutting an entire pumpkin face out of the pumpkin. And then so here have are his ears, which are only one section of the little I'm Jack B. Little. Yeah, that holds very nicely. Here, you can put that one on. It's cute. And here are his feet. And the feet can just stand there wherever you put them. Mm -hmm. So why don't we put them right up Well, the first we're going to get some lights in them. I think this oh, is an okay. important thing. I'm going to remove his eyes temporarily. 
and we're going to take our little Christmas lights. We've bundled two sets of three, which we're going to poke right out through this eye. These are indoor-outdoor lights and very useful for this kind of illumination. All right, now we'll set these back. So now, where do we want the little feet? That's a good one. And that's a good one. Yes, perfect. Okay. okay. The lights are all falling out. Tuck them in. Doesn't he look cute? Well, our owl looks great. The rest of the creatures look fantastic. Just go to MarthaStewart.com and get the instructions. And I know that you're inspired enough to create on your own too. So a quick trip to the pumpkin store. You know where that is, that farm stand, and you're gonna get the creature's ingredients and create on your own. Thanks so much, Tom. Uh, thank you, Mike. Brendan and I will share spooky spirits and sinful snacks when we return, if we return. <laughs> <laughs>